Hello and welcome to another episode of Lab Down Under. In this video, I'm going to have a look at a recent speech done by one of Australia's richest women, Gina Reinhart. And in it, she basically railed against climate change quote-unquote propaganda. And I thought it was a good exercise to have a look at this, to basically see what cherry-picking different facts actually meant, because she did cherry-pick a lot of um, evidence to support her views that climate change was something that was, you know, not um, not something that we should worry about, something that was being forced on children and stuff like that in schools. And um, yeah, and so this was a, uh, a good example, I think, of how climate skeptics actually do warp the, the facts and the reality of what's actually going on with uh, global warming, extreme weather events and stuff like that. So um, yeah, strap yourself in and let's get ready to go on Gina Reinhardt's climate change propaganda adventure. So Miss Reinhardt gave this speech last week at the St. Hilda's Anglican School for Girls in Perth, which was her former school. She actually graduated from there in 1971. And um, if you don't know who uh, Miss Reinhardt is, she is now the uh, executive chairman of Hancock Prospecting, which is a huge mining company in Australia. And they have their hands in a lot of different um, mining fields. Iron ore is a big one, copper, gold, coal, of course, which plays a huge role in her um, views on, you know, skepticism about climate change and stuff like that. And she's also, she also diversifies into other things like dairy, uh, she owns big cattle ranches, and um, real estate is also another, another thing. When you're rich, you can diversify, and she has a net worth I think Forbes put it at about $31 billion. So she's, yeah, quite well. As I said at the intro of this video, um, one of Australia's richest women, if not the uh, richest woman in Australia. So um, the speech that she gave was for the 125th anniversary of St. Hilda's. And they reached out as to her as one of her past alumni. And uh, the school reached out to her and basically... Um, yeah, asked her to deliver the speech. The speech was only meant to be about five minutes long. She ended up, uh, you know, making something which was over 16 minutes long, which ended up getting kind of cut down for when for the actual uh, public address to the students. So what was actually shown to the students was her reminiscing about her time uh, at St Hilda's. And, you know, her family had a long history with St. Hilda's, and so she basically talked about that. What wasn't aired, though, was this kind of uh, rant about climate change. And, as I said at the beginning, she complained about climate change propaganda, and that when she went to school there, uh, she was taught critical thinking, and she was taught to use facts and evidence, but now things have been changed, and students were getting this propaganda shoved down their throat about how we needed to uh, you know combat climate change and stuff like that so it, it was actually um, I don't know I, I found it I found it kind of ironic the the speech that she anyway I will get to that because it, it, that she had an amazing quote uh, which on self-reflection should have been pointing back to her, but I will get to that. I just want to go through a bunch of things first that she went through in the speech. She basically asked, you know, um, the kids to, you know, do quote unquote, do their own research, which is always a catch cry of any uh, climate skeptic, anti-vaxxer and stuff like that. Um, she pointed to uh, Al Gore's well-known documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, which he released in 2006 and which basically laid out what was going to happen uh, in, with climate change in the future. And scientists have agreed that looking back on that documentary, the trends that it predicted were mostly right. He made uh, some, you know, he did overhype some things. The, regarding sea levels and stuff like that. And of course, that's what Miss Reinhardt kind of latched onto in this case, saying that 
oh look, the s students at St Hilda's had been shown, you know, had been shown this this documentary, which was fake. It it showed, uh, it, it said that oh, you know, sea levels would be rising by now, etc., etc. And yes, that kind of thing is it hasn't happened quite as Al Gore predicted, but the overall trends that he did predict, I mean, sea levels have risen, just not to the extent that he, you know, said. Extreme weather has ramped up. We're getting more bushfires, hurricanes, flooding, droughts. Uh, so that kind of stuff, the trends that have been shown, that, that were portrayed in the documentary, have basically come to pass. The specific things... Which which Reinhardt latches onto and says, "Look, this is this documentary. This documentary is complete crap because he got these things wrong." Um, polar bears, I think, was another one that she she mentioned. So, as I said at the beginning at the beginning of this video, this is a great example of her cherry picking the facts. He got these things wrong. Ignore whatever he got right in that documentary to just pan the entire thing. And this is a repeat, this is a thing that um, she repeats throughout her speech regarding climate change, its impacts, and its trends. So she's asked, basically, she, she puts this question to the students, which came first, global warming or rising carbon emissions? And according to her, she said, oh, well, warming came first, and then the climate emissions came afterwards. Now, NASA has come out and said, look, there's increase in CO2 first, and then we have the warming afterwards, which is a complete reversal to what Mr. Reinhardt has actually said. So, for, according to NASA, they said that there was no question that increased levels of greenhouse, ga greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, have caused the Earth to warm, and will cause the Earth to warm in the future. So, Reinhardt in her speech basically pointed to a whole bunch of other extraneous factors. The distance, uh, the distance of the Earth from the Sun. Uh, emissions created by volcanoes. Saying that, oh look, these things, these are the things that, you know, cause the Earth to warm. And to some extent, yes, she's right. You have, you know, you get emissions, you get uh, pollution coming from volcanoes that will that will affect the climate. Um, solar fluctuations will affect the climate. But again, she's not looking at the... Like, she's cherry-picking the facts. She's not looking at the whole picture here. And she's ignoring all this other evidence which says that man-made pollution is also heavily infecting, affecting the climate. In fact, it's affecting the climate more so than these other things. So again, she's cherry-picking these things to say, look, the distance from the sun... Volcanoes, these are things outside of our control. We, we're not causing climate change. It's all natural. It's all affected by these things. And then she's completely ignoring all the pollution and stuff like that that we're putting out into the atmosphere. Um, and which scientists, the vast majority of scientists, of, of climate scientists, have said, look, yeah, this is causing climate change. And she mentioned the, um, the hockey stick graph. And I, I think if you've seen it, basically it's got the rises in fluctuations and then right recently after the uh, industrial revolution the grass just pans up like this completely unnatural looks nothing like what's happened for millions of years before this um so yes so she's again cherry picking what she wants the the facts that she wants to back her views and ignoring everything else now I want to come to that quote, which is amazing. The the level of uh, the lack of self reflection here on this quote was just unbelievable. And I will be reading this, so apologies if I look down to, at the um, paper. But here, quote, start quote. Please be very careful about information spread on an emotional basis, or tied to money, or egos, or power seekers, and always search for facts. End quote. Now, coming from somebody as rich and as powerful as Gina Reinhardt, this kind of quote made me laugh out loud because you you know you get the you get the statements from scientists that 
something is that the earth is warming climates are changing they're not in it for the money i've never met a scientist a climate scientist who's rolling in you know has a net worth of 31 billion dollars yet here we have gina reinhardt coming over and say look don't follow the egos don't follow the money look for the facts and it's tied in with her who's doing this likely because she has money in coal mining which will be heavily affected if we act on climate change and we decide it's something that we can actually change so that was just um yeah as i said it made me it made me laugh out loud at that quote um <laughs> so basically they we've had had some some scientists come out and criticize uh mr reinhardt and basically praise the uh praise the school for for saying well yeah we're gonna censor that part out and we're only gonna show the historical reminiscing about um about my time at st hilda's segments of Miss reinhardt's uh video so climate Climate Council spokesperson and uh, ANU Emeritus Professor Will Stefan basically criticized the, the speech. Um, he said, which is true, and he said that um, Reinhardt had no standing in the scientific community whatsoever. She's a businesswoman. She might know things. She might, yes, she definitely would know things about running businesses, about wealth accumulation etc but she has no scientific background at all and so there's no reason to be, to to listen to her about something like global warming because she hasn't you know she she doesn't have the same level of expertise as some as a climate scientist who has actually you know studied this stuff in depth in depth for years for decades and knows more than a thing or two about the field um so he basically said, yeah, it was important that uh, St. Hilda's stuck with reputable science, with what they were teaching their children, which is great. There's no propaganda here, like um, right, Mr. Reinhardt was saying. There's none at all. It's just, this is, this is the facts. This is the scientific consensus in what's happening. And yes, you will be able to find people who disagree with that scientific consensus, but they are in the minority and they're not the political heroes or whatever that they make themselves out to be. Science does not work like that. Science builds on a great body of evidence. Climate scientists as well, different scientists are doing their own experiments, looking at their own, like the data in their own ways and jointly building on this body of knowledge to basically say, yes, climate change is being driven by human activity. So, uh, Stefan actually also referred to Reinhardt's, um, indirectly referred to Gina Reinhardt's speech as clear misinformation, clear factual, uh, clear non-factual information, um, which was ironic because she was, you know, urging the students to look for the facts, but she wasn't really using the facts to back herself, or back her own speeches, uh, back her own speech. So... Um, and the principal of St. Hilda also basically said that the school did not endorse uh, Gina Reinhardt's views here. So the, in all, this was a good, I think, good response. Um, I mean, you can still find Jean, the whole speech. Uh, Gina Reinhardt's put it on her own personal website, but which is fine. She's free to do that on her own site. But I think the school had a right to kind of say, we're not going to touch this. Um, it was their own, like, you know, it was their own space. She was making the, um, you know, the speech on the 125th anniversary of the school. So they had a right to choose, you know, what they wanted to be said in that position, in that situation and what they didn't. So it's not really, the, you know, the idea of censorship here as well is, um, freedom of speech and stuff like that. Uh, if you're giving a speech in a public setting, the host of that public setting has a right to decide what you can and cannot say. So, 
um, I, I think they did the right thing here. So I think I'm going to wrap it up there because I feel I've squeezed every uh, last drop that I could out of uh, Gina Reinhardt's speech. I hope you've um, I hope you've enjoyed this and. Um, Please, if you have something interesting to say or if you want to ask a question about this or anything else, you can leave a comment below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe. Check out my other, um, you know, my other sites. I've got a lab down on the blog. I've got, um, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, stuff like that. I will leave all those links to that uh, below. And of course, I've got Patreon if you wanted to um, financially support me as well, which is always appreciated. So um, yeah, we'll leave it there until next time. Keep on being curious and I'll catch you around.